It's like the the same reason why I love being black. Oh, I love being because it's like I think I got an advantage okay. because of being black. Mm -hmm. I think I have an advantage because of the way I came up in this world and. Sh you know mm. what I mean? Mm. It's like my disadvantages are my advantages in this world. Mm. Because I'm always going to be underestimated from the door, but I'm always ready. So I don't have to get ready. That makes noise for me. Believe in yourself and believe that you're somebody. Yes, I'm black. I'm proud of it. I'm black and beautiful. I don't really know if this is my last time. But what I know is I'm feeling just fine. My life is like a What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. Subscribe or die trying. You see the clip? Shout out to Meth, man. Um, my this this is my advantage. So, when I was younger, my father told me something. He's a big guy, whatever. And he said, you know, you're always going to be looked at as the, the the villainous black man. Let's just say it that way. He said, but that don't mean you can't use it to your advantage. I was like, what you mean? He said, sometimes I know being just a nice, regular person is not going to work with some people. But I can tell that they're scared of me getting angry, so I get angry. So I can get the stuff over and get what I need or want out of the situation. You know what I mean? They, uh, 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 calm down, buddy. Don't, don't, don't do anything rash. Here you go. You know, that type of thing. So it, it's an advantage. And I was talking to a guy about, you know, just society. And um, a lot of y'all don't realize there's an, just like people, we look at an advantage of people who grew up in the middle class and upper class because their parents put them in a good position. You, you forget that there's an advantage to being you forget that there's an advantage to being in the lower class. You know, that's why, you know, they say America loves the underdog story. That's not necessarily true in practice, but it's true when people cheer for it. You know what I'm saying? Because when the underdog is better than you, you don't like it. You get what I mean? <laughs> but that's your advantage to be looked at as pe people, you're beneath someone. So, ow. Um, so a lot of times we don't talk about it, but yeah, I'm black. I'm from the hood. I've seen a lot of things. I've, and when people say they've seen a lot of things, what we're really saying is we see the difference between how America works for us and everybody else. I know the difference. I know how America works differently for me as a black man than it works for a white male or a Hispanic male or Asian male. I've watched it, you know, a Muslim man, I've watched it, I've seen it, right? Uh, I've been poor. So I've seen how America works with somebody who's poor, somebody who's middle class, somebody who's rich. I've seen it. Um, I've seen everybody's advantages and disadvantages. You know, I've seen how America will overpay and underpay. You know, they overpay this guy, they underpay that guy. You know, and it, and it comes from the same thing, right? I've seen it um and you know on my grand my grandfather told me he asked me a question well, he told me something he taught me something when I was like in, in college age and he says who you think of, who do you think is smarter a man from the city or a man from the country and I was just like I would say city you know I was young and he said no and I was like he said because a man from the city doesn't come to the country but a man from the country can go to the city and he can he still knows how to work in the city and the country. So he knows more. And then when we talk about sometimes people say they come here from other countries and they try to out, you outwork these Americans because they're lazy, yada, 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 yada. He said they come from this situation and you, you come from that situation. Even with that, it, for us it's an advantage because I'm going to tell y'all something that y'all don't understand. Some of y'all come from poverty and poverty stricken nations, but you have, you made an assumption that a lot of black Americans haven't been in the same poverty you've been in. Now, if you're talking about a certain age group, you know, I could see that, but that's not, don't, don't, don't mistake yourself 
was saying, oh, y'all all Americans, so y'all all been living high on the hog, and I came from this area, and I was, you know, we were living worse than y'all, because a lot of people that we talk about that come to this country, y'all come to this country from nice middle-class families, or, you know, you know, so y'all, y'all ain't, all don't come from just dirt, poor poverty, you're lying, um, but that's the other thing, um, when you're looked at as less than, people expect less. And even when you do more, people ex- people make you do more because they expect less from you. And if you don't get what I'm saying, you know, you're underestimated to the point where, you know, your excellence is an anomaly. And you got to do it over again and over again and over again and over again and over again. And then your excellence becomes the norm. For other people, their their excellence is an anomaly, but their excellence is praised you know, through perpetuity, you know, I used to use the the, the, the sports clip of um, when Jeremy Lin was in the NBA, he went off on a tear in like his first five games, right? He just went, he was killing, but he wound up with ice creams and this, and you know, it was ice cream and it was promoting him everywhere. You know, I think he was in New York at the time, but and then they, they put him on the same level as Kobe. And it's like, how, how did you do that? Because they weren't accustomed to an Asian guard balling. Did he keep that up for, for an extended period of time? Absolutely not. You know, he got bounced around to other teams. I'm not saying he wasn't good because he was. Um, but Lin's sanity was a thing. But he only, it took him like five games for him to be, oh, man, he's he, man. He's up there. He's like Kobe. Like, whoa, slow down, pimp. But Kobe was Kobe for a decade and and change. You get what I'm saying? And the black players knew, yeah, I ain't, I can't be Kobe. I'm sorry. Even Dwayne Wade talked about that on on uh, Shannon Sharp's podcast. Like, I don't want that, you know. But that's the thing about our excellence. And when the people talk about black excellence, it's got to it's got to be above and beyond. That's the issue with a lot of great things that we've done as black people in America, you know, you, America doesn't, doesn't want to say, yeah, they did that. 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 It's just, you know, we get the, what about Chicago? What about all these other, what about all these inventions? What about all these, you know, innovations? What about all these most ways to conduct business? What about all of these, you know, um, what do you call this? Economies that we made out of nothing. You know, what about that? You know, if you want to, you know, y'all don't think it, y'all got credit cards. Where you, th- where, where you think, who's, whose mind did you think that came from? The, the way the plant works, you know, whether it's automotive or any kind of uh, manufacturing plant, where do you think that came from? You see what I'm saying? We like snacking. Where you where you think these potato chips came from? You like peanut butter and jelly? Where you think it came from? You like light bulbs? Where you oh you thought it was Edison? No, it wasn't. See what I'm saying? No, no, it wasn't. You like you, you I'm wearing my glasses. You 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 like you like LASIK? That was a black lady. You like your I got a house alarm. My alarm says that was a black woman too. You like that? You see what I'm saying? These, these people don't have no culture. It's funny because last time I checked, all the things that they call was, let's just say, ninja food is all American culture now. You get fried chicken everywhere. People, y'all, all y'all are wing connoisseurs. All of y'all are somehow are rib connoisseurs. All of y'all somehow know how to make mac and cheese and potato salad all of a sudden. All of y'all are making all of these seafood dishes. You know, all, everybody's from Louisiana. and Everybody can make gumbo and jambalaya and etouffee. Like, wh- where do you think they came from? You thought what you, what you thought they came from France? That's what you thought. That's what you thought. All this slave food, all of a sudden, that's a delicacy. Y'all eating oxtails left and right. What? What do you think that came from? Y'all forget, you know, even even the, the the symbol for America was actually a black woman. The Statue of Liberty was actually a black woman. Look at the the feet of the Statue of Liberty. It has a chain on it. They sent that sucker back because it was a black woman's face and put a white woman's face on it. I talked about that with black veterans recently. So a lot of this, and even when I'm talking black on black generationalism, let's just try that. 
a lot of you cats don't realize this, but y'all underestimate. I'm in. I'm at the end of Gen X. I'm like the end of Gen X, the beginning of the millennials, right? A lot of y'all underestimate who y'all dealing with because we came up in a different era, bro. We came up at the, you know, we came up, you know, latchkey crack era, you know, you know, back in the, you know, where the racism was still on, on you know, on 10, you know, where the teachers hated you, you know, but the schools were profiting off of you. You know what I'm saying? We we came up in that. We came up with where, where, where even the police wouldn't come to certain neighborhoods because it's still going down. They don't they don't care that you got a badge. You you want it, you want smoke, you're gonna get it. We came up in a different era. We came up, you know, where where all these people that are getting away with all of these shenanigans and crimes, they didn't make it. They were grown men that was there was dog walking, quote unquote, gangsters out here. Cause hey dog, you need to take that over there. You know. So a lot of us are underestimated. A lot of our abilities are underestimated. Because you 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 know, last hire first fired, you know, hire for the longest, promoted the least. You know what I'm saying? So even though the things I'm saying is, is when you're constantly pushing that adversity, it's like weightlifting. I'm 165 pounds. I don't even do bench press on a bench anymore after I got in that car wreck, but I still do the, um, there was a Smith machine. Uh, every Sunday, I'm going to get up, go work out. I do sets of 50. I can put 225 on a Smith machine and just do 50 reps straight. Not a problem. You know, I box a lot. Don't you ever, in your, if you ever were to get in a fight with me, I'm going to tell you one rule. Don't let me hit you. I hit very, I hit like a heavyweight. Honestly. I'm not playing. I'm not joking. I'm not lying. Right or left hand. I hit like a heavyweight. I used to wrestle. You never know it. You never, but if I grab you, it's over with. I'm probably a better wrestler than I am a boxer. And I wrestled, I started wrestling in high school. I didn't learn all the good moves until after I was, you know, done wrestling because I was kind of bored with it. But mentally, I graduated, when I graduated college, the last year and a half, I couldn't afford books. I went off of memory and, um, and notes and note and different notebooks. And in all honesty, and I took, my last like three semesters, I want to say I took 18, 21, and 15 hours. All memorization, pretty much. Like, like I said, mentally, I ain't, I ain't no dummy. Look, uh, people say, I, you know, I do good YouTube content, but even musically, I got two albums on this page and playlist. They ain't, they, you can tell I have talent. Underestimated, right? I'm just, a, for me, I think I'm a normal black guy. So a lot of this stuff is our advantage, you know, but, um, so, you know, when people have a superiority complex, it's like, you sure you won't try that? You know what I'm saying? I got guns. I can shoot them. Hunting, fishing, not a problem. I ain't going to say, I ain't going to say hunting because I don't like hunting. I really don't. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's, it's not a thrill to go out somewhere and shoot a deer or a hog like that is not I'm like whatever you know because if y'all ever went hunting you would know deer really don't keep like a deer will eat right next to you you got a rifle in your hand and a lot of y'all think oh we killing out here it's like yeah shut up you know um a hog a hog a hog will charge you a hog will charge you because the hogs figure out that you're hunting them and they got kids and whatnot but it's not like it's not it's not it's like yeah you know fishing you gotta have patience you know, hunting depends on what you're hunting. You know, you're not going to hunt in an environment where things are hunting you. See, that's why I know people are punks. Like, you wouldn't go hunting in uh, the Rocky Mountains because you, you don't want a mountain lion hunting. You don't want to go hunting in the Midwest because a bear or a wolverine might get you a wolf. You know, a lot of y'all ain't built for that. <laughs> you know, y'all talk that stuff, but I guarantee, let me tell you something. You don't want to be in Mich anywhere in Michigan hunting and you realize there's wolverine somewhere around you like i gotta go but you know because people un people don't underestimate that animal um but we're underestimated and that is our strength is what i'm trying to say so i'm gonna leave it at that like share subscribe or die try and catch y'all on the next one peace all i ask
is when you lay your head on that pill at night. You know, I gave you everything I had. 